16 pounds in the pregnancy. She's riding her bike a week up to the time she went into labor. And so she goes into labor. 30 hours later, nothing's happening. Now, being ignorant is sometimes a bliss because I didn't really notice the concern on the nurses' faces. But then the heartbeat in the baby and Wade started to go down. And so the nurses are running around and they get something, they throw it at me. It's one of those smocks and they're going, you know, get ready because she might have to go get a C-section. I'm going like, you want me to go in there? I said, I'm going to go to the chapel. So I leave and I go into the chapel at Presbyterian Hospital. No one's in there. I get on my knees and I cry out to God. It was one of those moments like, God, you got to move, but you got to move now, man. Where are you, God? And I go back into the room, you know, after being up for 30 hours, I'm, I'm tired and, and, you know, my head's in a fog and, you know, like, but you're all looking like, who cares about you? She's the one that was in labor, right? <laughs> but all of a sudden, the cork became unplugged, and here comes Wade out of the chute. <laughs> That's my medical terms for it. <laughs> he just popped out of there. And you should have seen the cone head the dude had. After Jane pushing for all those hours, he had this cone head. We're like that. Go, it's an alien <laughs> from Saturday Night Live. That's what he looked like. I put that beanie on his head. Looks disgusting. <laughs> That's not my son. Push him back in there. I won't say what I said when I came out, because that wouldn't be appropriate. But I recognize that he was a boy when he came out. <laughs> but I thought about that situation. It was like God really spoke to me that he was in this. Even though it didn't happen the way it was supposed to, even though he waited to the last minute before Jane had to go get a cesarean section, God stepped in when we needed him. And it was at that moment I began to start wondering, I think God has a call on Wade's life. And there are other situations that we've seen that, of miracles and angels stepping in and ways that God has preserved Wade's life because he has a call on his life. So it isn't too far-fetched to know that there are many in this room right now that you could use a sign from God. Shake your head up and down like this. If you say, you know, I could use a sign from God right now. This is the way life is. This is the way that we face those obstacles, those bumps in the road. And we wonder, God, are you intricately involved in my life? Are you, are you personally concerned about what's going on here? God spoke to Joseph through a dream at the perfect time. Pray and trust that God will speak to you and reveal his heart and his directives for you in the situations you're in. In the world today, we're facing many financial challenges, health issues, relational issues, but Jesus continues to give us the assurance that he's with us. I love this passage in John 16, 33. As Jesus gathers his disciples together, and this is before he gets arrested to go to the cross, and he assures them, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So how are we going to respond? Joseph was obedient. Joseph after God spoke to him in the dream, he remained faithful to Mary. He took her as his wife. He protected, he provided for, and he nurtured the child Jesus to raise him up. He submitted to the Lord's will by taking on the role of being Jesus' earthly father and raised him up as the savior of the world. You know, 
the end of that video, he says, farewell, mother. And when I heard that, it made me think about, you know, sometimes there's a cost to being obedient to God. There are times that God calls us to do things that are sometimes painful, sometimes where there's separation, where there's loss, but it's in those moments that God takes us on our own particular journeys that God is able to bring his kingdom to us and to those around us. You know, you think about what Joseph had to go through, that he had to take Mary to Bethlehem to register for the census. But then Herod heard about this new child and sent in his troops to kill the baby. And God warns Joseph again in a dream to go down to Egypt. And he goes down to Egypt, and they have to stay as refugees in Egypt until Herod the Great dies so that he can safely bring Jesus, the king of the Jews, back up into Galilee and raise him up. That probably meant that he never, Joseph never saw his mother again. Following Jesus can often have a cost. The classic example of this, a modern contemporary martyr, is a guy by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. That during Hitler's regime in Germany, during World War II, he was arrested because he was speaking out against the atrocities that the Nazis were bringing on people. And in his memoirs, it was written here, listen to this. In his hearing before the Gestapo during his imprisonment, defenseless and powerless as he then was, only fortified the word of God in his heart. He stood erect and unbroken before his tormentors. He refused to recant and defied the Gestapo machine by openly admitting that, as a Christian, he was an implacable enemy of national socialism and its totalitarian demands toward the citizen. Defied it, although he was continually threatened with torture and the arrest of his parents, his sisters, and his fiancée. In 1944, when friends made an attempt to liberate him and to take him to safety abroad, listen to this, he decided to remain in prison in order not to endanger others. Wow. The last service which Dietrich Bonhoeffer held on the day before his death moved all deeply. Bonhoeffer, who was never tried, went steadfastly on his last way to be hanged and died with admirable calmness and dignity. God heard his prayer and granted him the, quote, costly grace. That is the privilege of taking the cross for others and of affirming his faith by martyrdom. Dietrich Bonhoeffer is going to have a special place does have a special place in heaven. But Joseph's obedience, I believe it helped assure the salvation of the world. This was the heart and resolve in Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He wrote, How can a man wax arrogant if in his life he shares the suffering of God? Joseph's obedience, it it brought personal loss, it caused him to endure the shame of Mary's pregnancy. He had to leave his homeland, but he stayed the course. He didn't give in. I believe Joseph had eternity in mind, that he knew the impact of his obedience. It was to preserve the Savior of the world. He gave his life for the sake of the world. He gave us life for you and for me. I believe that's a kingdom of God perspective. That's the heart of a disciple. We're called to give ourselves for the sake of others. We've heard this saying many times that it's not about us. 
but it's about his kingdom. I think that God has called us to be a people of generosity. He's called us to be giving. And sometimes we have to be giving where giving is even sacrificial. I'm going to have the ushers come forward. We're going to take a special offering for one day, as you saw the video here. Now, I think, of, I think about one day of Convoy of Hope, of what we're participating in here. I can't think of a better way to invest a dollar. How many times can we invest one dollar that be, will be stretched to buy ten dollars worth of goods? That will be used for those in desperate need, not only in our country but around the world. Of feeding hungry children, but also responding to natural disasters. The church in Macedonia is an example of this in 2 Corinthians 8. Paul said, and now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian church. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. And they gave over and above what they could for the church, the struggling church in Jerusalem. I just think this one day thing, when I heard about this, I said, you know, that's smart and that's strategic. That's a great way to give where we are giving to something that is making an incredible difference in the lives of those that are suffering in the world. We've done an incredible job caring for the needs around here. What Ronnie was talking about is this home makeover we're doing for Barbara, the woman who lost her husband, who uh, lost her job and then had to get uh, surgery because of cancer. And so we're doing an extre extreme makeover in her trailer and we were over there painting today. What a great thing that we do over and over and over for our community. We responded wholeheartedly to the cry of the orphans, that the money we gave is helping the orphanage in Haiti buy not five acres that they needed, but they're able to buy 30 because of what we gave. And now they have enough land that they can have that orphanage for 500 children that they're having a vision for that we can save those lives, literally save those lives. And now we have an opportunity to make a sacrificial contribution that will impact those that God loves and that will make a difference for those that are suffering around the world. Jane and I have determined what is a one-day salary for us, and we're giving that. And even Wade and Joey, they've been working themselves. They're taking light heart to heart this and they're deciding what they're giving by their choice and nothing of us uh, pushing them in this this is a way that i believe god can speak to the josephs in the world that are crying out to god right now and saying god where are you in this critical time of need where are you in acts 20 35 i think this is a great verse for us for this christmas it says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so here, this offering we're taking, it's not out of any uh, pressure, no obligation. This is just between you and God, what you have prayed about for the last three weeks, for you to give what God has put in your heart for Convoy of Hope, and that through this offering, we will send everything to Convoy of Hope, and they will use it to feed the poor, to feed the hungry, and to help those that are suffering and struggling due to natural disasters. And so uh, what we want you to do for those of you who want to participate in this is on your check, put it to Canyon View Vineyard Church. We will put this all together and we will send the whole amount to Convoy of Hope. And so if you want to write a check, you can do that or you can put cash in the bucket as God leads you. And if you don't want to do this, we are not watching who's going to put money in there. This is between you and God. So I want to pray for this offering. I want God to multiply it. Father, we thank you for a convoy of hope, and we thank you that we have relationship with these guys and that we can contribute to the incredible ministry that they have to reach those that are suffering and in distress even right now as we speak. Lord, take this money and use it for your glory. Take this money and multiply it, not 10 times, Lord, but 15, 20 times. Use this money, Lord, for your kingdom, 
to bring deliverance to those in distress and those in need as you direct Convoy of Hope. And we thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to participate with them in this. And Lord, we want to do this joyfully out of thankfulness for what you do for us, most of all, Lord, for sending us Jesus, our Savior. And we pray in Jesus' name. So the ushers will take this offering as we watch this video. God bless you guys, and we'll have the worship team come up.